Kenyan government set to tackle Malami on the continued detention of Namde Kano under the DSS. Hmm. We are aware about the history of Kano, how he was arrested from Kenya. It was recorded that he, being a UK citizen, he lives in UK with his family. Then he traveled from the UK to Kenya on a personal trip. On arriving Kenya, the Kenyan government, in alignment with the Nigerian government, trapped him there and then subsequently handed him over to the Nigerian government, all right, from which he was returned from Kenya to Nigeria for trial. Trial on several offenses, ranging from terrorism to treason and several other charges they put on him. For 17 months now, Kano has been in detention. The case has been in court for all this period with his lawyers defending him against the federal government accusation. Unfortunately, um, all the charges that have been put against Kano have all been quashed in the court. Federal government has been asked to release Kano immediately discharge him and acquit him and then compensate him for violating his fundamental human rights but federal government on their own part has refused to do that now amid all of that human rights group of united nations has been pushing nigeria and pushing kenyan government to do the needful first of all they've been pushing nigeria to release kano unconditionally and then compensate him for violating his human rights. They've also been pushing Kenyan government to see what they know about the arrest and detention of Namde Kano. His arrest from by Kenyan government, handing him over to the Nigerian government, and his continued detention by the Nigerian government in Nigeria. But unfortunately, Kenyan government actually hasn't said anything about that. And that is actually not looking very good. Kenya cannot tell us they don't know about the, the, the alignment they had with Nigerian government to get Namde Kano moved from Kenya to Nigeria. They also cannot say they don't know the collaborators, the people within Nigerian government that collaborated with Kenyan authorities, both in the military, in form of intelligence and all of that, to get Namde Kano trapped in Kenya. Somebody must have sent that news or that information from UK to Nigeria that, look, Namde has moved from Kenya, from uh, UK to Kenya. They should go and trap him there. They got all of that information and they went again into um, Kenya and aligned with Kenyan authority and trapped him there. Again, on the other part, again, UK government has also not shown that Kano is a citizen. Kano is a citizen of the United Kingdom holding United Kingdom passport. And it was also documented that he went from United Kingdom to Kenya with the UK passport, not with Nigerian passport. It therefore means that he went to Kenya as a UK citizen and not as a Nigerian citizen. And so on that premise, Kenya actually did not have right to trap Namde Kano there. And Nigeria also did not have that right to pick him from Kenya back to Nigeria because he went, even though he holds, I don't know, I don't think he holds a Nigerian passport anymore. His only UK passport is holding. And so he, they cannot hold him, um, they cannot hold him captive. They don't have the right to arrest him. And United Kingdom has refused to say something or do something tangible about the release of Namde Kano as their citizen. Now, we could see what happened when um, uh, one of the American citizens was kidnapped in the north, right, by bandits. Overnight, U.S. sent their, their, their fighters overnight. They killed the abductors, rescued their citizen. The same night, took him back to U.S. Nigerian government did not even know that they came until they had left the next day. 
that is a country that cares for her own citizen. Now, secondly, I think they had another man, either from Oshun State or so, that retired from the United States and came to came to his country, Nigeria, to you know to do agriculture. Unfortunately, he was abducted and killed. Again, United uh, uh, U.S. government proved that this guy is that was their citizen. They came all the way to demand even for the dead body, the cops. And then they moved the body back to United to United States and buried him in the United States because the body is their property because the man was their citizen and came to Nigeria as a U.S. citizen. That is also a country that cares for its citizen. Unfortunately, America itself too, as a world political leader, has also not done anything tangible about the case of Kano. Rather, I believe UK and US are playing uh, a double game here. They are not being honest with the situation. UK, as, um, as a body that colonized Nigeria and granted Nigeria independence to become autonomous, still is not doing anything tangible to perfect the political space, to perfect the political condition of Nigeria, so that Nigeria can be truly independent and rule itself amidst the immaturity and selfishness that is found within our politicians that claim to be leading Nigeria. It's unfortunate that in the case of Nam de Kano, that the United States has not done anything tangible. United Nations have actually not done anything tangible. It's just a body, the human rights group inside United Nations that are the people pushing to get Nam de Kano released unconditionally. But United Nations Governing Council actually has not said anything that will you know lead to release of Nam de Kano unconditionally. United Kingdom has continued to keep mum, has continued to keep quiet rather than telling the government to do the needful and release that young man because one, he did not violate any even any 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 government law. He is just like any other person, you know, asking for Autonomy, asking for independence because he is not satisfied anymore with the state, the way Nigeria is being governed. And everybody has that right. And again, it was enshrined in the amalgamation law when Nigeria was amalgamated that after 100 years, all right, the group that is agitating for secession has a right to, you know, to get that secession and become autonomous or to review the issue and bring it up again for discussion and negotiation so they can also be autonomous and be independent. That 100 years has expired in 2014 because that happened 1914. Between 1914 and 2014 was 100 years. All right? So anybody agitating for Biafra right now has a right by all international standards and by all forms of human rights has a right to say, we want to be on our own. So, Nam de Kano has actually not committed any crime. But unfortunately, both US government, UK government is not doing anything tangible about his release. And the Kenyan government has actually not said anything since then. It's now that they are thinking they have to come and engage the Nigerian government to make sure and to see what they know um, about Nam de Kano's arrest and to see if he can be released. Now, now they break. All right, we are waiting for them. Let us come and engage the adamant government. I can let us come and engage the Attorney General and Minister for Justice of the Federation of Nigeria, uh, Malami himself, that is actually perpetuating a northern agenda, a Fulani agenda against the Igbos and against the rest of Nigerians. I don't know what the Igbos have done to the Aousas and the Fulanis that they hate them with passion. Now we have people agitating for Odudua nation, the Yoruba nation. Nobody has been arrested there on that premise. Nobody, nothing has happened to anybody. But they keep on holding the Igbos and trying to annihilate them, trying to do ethnic cleansing, to, to, to clean them up from Nigerian map, because that is what they're trying to do, to make sure that they're that, 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 that relegated below the background forever, such that their voice never be heard. Unfortunately, the Igbos are insurmountable. They cannot be suppressed. 
they cannot be pulled down they cannot be relegated they don't take shit that is who they are and they will continue to fight kill them they will continue to fight they will continue to say they will continue to agitate and there will be no peace there will be no rest until now the can is released and until biafra is granted that is the state of it if they don't want biafra to be granted then let them do the needful for nigeria for them to prove that nigeria is actually one run a system of government that includes everybody from all the geopolitical zones from all ethnic groups that you know to have sense of belonging that yes this is our country for us and our children and our generation so this is um, what we have to share this afternoon um, let's see how how far kenya will go with this plan and with this uh, um, initiative thank you for listening and put your comment below